So let's talk about ancestor altars. I've been getting some questions lately from people about how to connect with their loved ones and their friends or their family that have passed and they're not sure how to do that. While there are a variety of other ways, an ancestor altar is a really great way to do that. Um, now you can set this up anywhere that you want, but I would recommend doing it in more of a low traffic area. You want to keep things like this away from, um, you know, more peaceful areas of the house, such as, you know, your bedrooms, your sleeping quarters. Um, and you want to keep it out of like high activity areas too, because you don't want that to amplify the energy that's already in that space, right? Because what you're doing here essentially is you're creating a spirit highway for um, those that are connected to you to come over and visit and connect. And so if there's already a lot of stuff going on, you don't want that there and if you're trying to create a nice peaceful spot where you're sleeping you know not everyone's going to ask first before they come and say hello they might just appear so you want to make sure that you um put it in kind of more of a low traffic neutral sort of area in your house but one that is also easy for you to kind of access regularly now First, we need to choose what we're going to use for our ancestor altar. And a lot of people use tables, and that's fine. If you have just like a little bookshelf or even a small little square table, it doesn't have to be big, right? Um, there just has to be enough space for the things that you think that you want to um, put on there and the altar setup that you want to use. So what I would say first is definitely cleanse whatever area you're using because you want to reset the energy um, in a really good way. You know, even somebody touching something in a bad mood or whatever can disturb the energy of the space. So you want to start with a clean slate, nice welcoming energy to have everyone come on over. Uh, when you're done too, you want to consecrate it and bless it um, and let it know what the space is going to be used for um, so that it is kind of charged and ready to go for that. Uh, a lot of people like to put um, like a white tablecloth over the altar too. Some people will like to use, um, you know, symbols and um, like blankets, coats of arms, colors, different things that are special to their family. Uh, maybe you got like a really big like football family team. So you put like Green Bay Packers lining. You can do that. It's okay, right? Because it's whatever you want and whatever makes your family happy and feel comfortable. But you want to set up a really nice space for them to come in. Now, after that, the most important thing you want to do is you want to set up a guardian for the space, right? Because every good nightclub needs a bouncer and you're going to need one because what you're doing is, is you're opening a door or a portal and you want to make sure the people come in that you want in and you want to keep the riffraff out, right? You don't want somebody in there that's just going to kind of come stirring up and causing trouble and messing with stuff, right? Like you're choosing who you're going to let in. Um, it's a, you're assigning a gatekeeper basically, right? So who do you pick? How do we choose somebody? Well, this could be a deity that you work with. It could be maybe an angel. Maybe you have a specific totem that works for you that you want to use, but really take some time and put some thought and effort into that and figure out who you think would be the best person to keep that space safe and secure for you. Once you do that, you need to reach out and connect with them um, in whatever process or way works best for you. Um, if you're using one of your psychic senses, you can do that and reach out and connect and let them know what you need them to do for you in the space. You know, set up the rules and boundaries of guidelines. We can do this. We can't do this. These people can come in. These people cannot come in, right? So um, you are in complete control of who is entering your space, um, you know, because like I said earlier, this is like a spirit highway that you're creating. So you don't want to let just everybody in, right? Um, you want to make sure you get just the people that you're asking to communicate and connect with. Now, once that's done, there are some other basic things that usually go on an altar. Um, a lot of times they'll do one of those seven day um, glass candles, you know, the big ones that you see, they're usually in kind of um, the religious candle section, you know, where they have all the, all the other candles um, in the glass jars, get a white one. And the reason that you're going to want to have a candle here is because you are essentially lighting the way for your ancestors and your loved ones um, and those who have crossed over to come and find you, right? It's sort of a beacon for them. So you want to make sure that you have a candle that's continuously going um, and the ones in the glass are usually pretty good for that. Um, of course, fire fo follow fire safety rules. Um, don't leave anything unattended because weird stuff can happen. Um, but, you know, use your best judgment with that. But I have to tell you, follow the fire safety rules. I don't want anyone to have any issues with their home um, going up in flames because you're not paying attention to candles. But that is the essential premise of having a candle there for you. You, um, is to light the way and show them where they where basically their their bus stop is right like where to get off that's where they go and um, so that's one of the important things another thing you want to have probably is like a little bowl of water or some water in some form on the altar so water is kind of said to be seen as kind of an entry point 
from the other side to this side. So what you're doing is, is you're making it easier for them to come in, right? Um, it's just kind of like a nice little flow through instead of like trying to like, you know, bump their way on in. So having some water is good and always make sure that you keep it fresh. If you notice it's getting dirty, please change it. Um, if you notice the water levels evaporating, go get some fresh ones, you know, scrub the bowl out, make sure everything's clean, don't have those rings around it, right? Like you wanna have a nice space for people to come in and you want it to be inviting. Now the other fun part about the altar is really personalizing it to the people that you want to see. So if you have specific family members, you can always use photos. It's a super easy way. You can use other trinkets too. If somebody has a piece of jewelry, maybe a favorite book um, that somebody has read, something somebody has given you, um, anything that would represent people that you are wanting to welcome in or honor um, in this way. So say you have a pilot in your family and maybe you don't have, so you're like, I have nothing, I have no pictures, I'm not, I don't know what to do. So you can go get a little toy airplane and put it on your altar with the intention that this is representing this particular person who I am trying to welcome in and connect with right? Um, other things you can put up are flowers. Um, you can pick ones that just feel pretty or you can pick ones that are special to maybe a particular member of your family. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter so much which ones. It doesn't have to be specific, but just pick something that looks um, that looks nice. It's a nice offering to leave there. And when the flowers die uh, is at the point when you want to remove them, right? Um, that's when you take them off and put a fresh batch in and change, you know, change the water out and everything. Uh, the other thing besides flowers that you might want to leave out is some people like to leave out food or drinks of some sort. Uh, some people might leave out, you know, a shot of whiskey or a glass of wine or, um, you know, maybe somebody's favorite soda, whatever it is. Um, also too, you can leave out food, right? Like maybe um, you leave out like a little cup of rice or an apple or maybe a couple pieces of somebody's favorite candy, right? That's another something that you can leave out. So how do you know when not to leave it out? Because we all know like food goes in the refrigerator or it spoils and it's gross, right? So basically the rule is with the ancestor altar, when the food has no more life left in it, that's when you remove it and replace it if you want. Um, it's sort of an optional thing. So just do whatever you feel intuitively pulled to do what feels right for you. Definitely on special occasions, that is something that you can also do too, to honor somebody's memory. If it's a birthday, if it's an anniversary, anniversary of somebody's passing. Um, those are also times to maybe do special things um, on your altar for that person. Now, the last part I will mention about the ancestor altars is that these are actually work. So it's not something you can just kind of set up and leave out and hey, whatever, right? Like you have to pay attention to this because it's basically like somebody inviting somebody over to your home, leaving them on the couch and ignoring them because you're talking on the phone, or you're making dinner or whatever. You know, you have set this up because you want to connect and you want to reach out and you want to talk and you want to, you know, get messages, whatever it is. So um, here's kind of the rule of thumb when you have the ancestor altar. You should acknowledge it or pay attention to it every day. Whether it's just you walk by and say, hey, what's up? How's everybody doing? You know, love you. Have a great day. Um, whether you want to um, walk by before you go to bed and just say a little prayer or give thanks and, you know, whatever it is, um, recite something. Uh, that's an option. Sometimes, too, if you want to really connect, something you can do is just sit down in front of it. And just reach out with your psychic senses, see if you hear anything, see if you feel anything, see if you get impressions of anything. Um, for me, I have a lot of psychic abilities. So for my particular ancestor altar, it's very easy. It's almost like a person actually sitting there. I'll walk by and be like, hey, so-and-so, how you doing? They'll be like, hey, Nikki, what's going on? You know, I'm like, have, and they go, have a great day. I'm like, thanks, you too. You know, and it doesn't even have to be like a big conversation, um, but it's just a little something. And it just, it feels so nice to know that they're there whenever you want or need them. Um, and it's easy, right? If you want to really have a conversation, maybe you're having a hard time, you're struggling, you know, you can sit down and meditate and just reach out and see if that person's there and just have a conversation with them, whether it's, you know, in, in your meditation space, in your mind's eye, where you go and sit and maybe your favorite spot to chat or whether maybe you don't get a visualization, maybe you just get words, you ask questions and you hear them talking to you and giving you advice. You know, th these are ways that you can sit and still connect and have everyone part of your life, even though they're not here on this physical plane. It's actually really, it's really kind of like sweet, warm energy to have. So 
hopefully that helps you if this is something that you want to try to set up and you're not sure where to start or how to get going. Um, I have a blog article up on my website too if you want more of a step-by-step, -step, if you want it kind of written out for you. Um, and if you have any questions on it, please let me know. But I hope that you try it. I hope that you get to say hello. Um, and I hope that you guys have an absolutely beautiful day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.